Okay, so funny stuff. <laughs> All right, everybody, the robots are coming uh, to get us. You see, uh, the way the internet works is that you got these robots. Oh, they're going around looking for things to do. And the robots, they come to get you and your information, and they spread out. Like spider bots. Like spider bots. Hold it. Spider bots. <laughs> spider bots. Google bots. Activate. In a world where Google has bots and they activate, people say, <laughs> people say, Google bots activate. The end. <clears throat> Autobots transform. Autobots. See, I can get close. Autobots Google transform. Bots. The problem with Optimus Prime's voice in those movies is it's so like. <laughs> overly He's majestic. Racing. It's like overly majestic. And we are here to save the world from the auto transformer. The Decepticons. Bangs, the Decepticons. The Decepticons. We will have to continue this battle another day. We are here to save the humans. Now I know the Decepticons of all these fancy transformations fancy. will only drive on the ground. We drive on the ground. If if you are caught turning into any kind of a vehicle that flies in the air, flies in the air, you will be disbanded from disbanded. the Autobots. I am Optimus Prime. At <laughs> some point, this bit got really dumb. Robots in you know it's the in the song it's um robots in disguise. I uh, for the longest time I thought it was robots in the skies. Oh no, Megatron and Scar Starscream are getting away. They're flying at <laughs> I'm going to faster accelerate. than the speed of sound. I'm going to accelerate to 100 miles an hour. I'm going to turn into the slowest vehicle known to man, a uh, semi-tractor trailer. Tractor trailer. The rest of you Autobots, go faster and I'll get there <laughs> later. Okay, everybody, quiet on the set. Autobots, the Film Reverie podcast, take 11, transforms now. And action. Hello, Film River. This is this is. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Film River. I was a little drunk and I was just shy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Film Reverie listeners. Listeners. <laughs> <laughs> this is Michael Beckemeyer. I'm here, as always, with... Bradley Kingston, the Balding Ewok. The Balding Ewok. Um, and today we are joined by Jonathan Schieffer, and I said it right. Yes, uh, who is film- an intense person. <laughs> who is an intense person. <laughs> uh, filmmaker from California. Where exactly in California? I currently live in Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa. That sounds so much fancier than like what? Orlando. <laughs> His name what sounds is... fancy is next door. It's called Newport Beach. <laughs> oh, okay. Those, those are the those are the expensive seats. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 I wouldn't know. I just know that. Orlando, <laughs> I, I can I just, barely afford food. I just food. know Orlando is hot. I Florida eat out of hot. cans every day. I have I have been catching up on your guys' podcast, and I think Brad does the most amazing Cartman impersonation <laughs> ever. <laughs> Brad, thank you. You are so kind. You should hear his <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Walken. I did. I, 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 I you mentioned that on one podcast. I also thought it's another guy sometimes he d- slips into accidentally or on purpose. I don't know. Is the dude from uh, Princess Bride? Oh, Enigo Montoya. No, no, no. No, the, uh, the one with the poison. Inconceivable. <laughs> inconceivable! <laughs> that actually... <laughs> By the way, I hear that guy's a genius just like Brad. Oh, oh. Uh, I love... That's okay. like my favorite part of We've reached Princess the blow Bride. smoke up Brad's ass portion <laughs> of the show. When they go all, like, logical... <laughs> When we were in the screenings, he was making me laugh, man. You just these tiny little one-liners, and I, I was like, I can't laugh because the filmmakers here, and this isn't the comedy oh, section. I know, <laughs> and I was holding back. I, I could tell. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I was just trying to figure out how soon I could leave. Yeah, so I guess we should mention that we met, we met you at the uh, Orlando Film Festival a couple weeks ago, but it was so weird because we have a mutual friend, uh, an actress named uh, Wanda Russell. What a who, cool name. I know. That's her real name, too. Wonder. The West Coast Wonder yeah. Russell. 
the <laughs> West Coast Wonder Russell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the West Coast, because we, 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 we also met the East Coast Wonder Russell. Her name is Grace. Okay. Yeah. The but, hell? <clears throat> but, um... <laughs> but um so uh where, where was i oh we it was the day of the festival and wonder says hey beckemeyer do you know jonathan schieffer uh he's uh he's gonna be at the festival too and i thought okay cool and i was walking around the festival and the impasse poster is right next to the poster for your movie algorithm so we were destined to to meet and yes make a you know be friends right away which which i and i like you too so i hope that continues that's that's highly fortunate. It's always great when you meet someone and like them. Oh, yeah. People yeah. should like us. Yeah. People should like us. <laughs> and, if they, and if you don't, you can stop listening right now, bitches. Shove <laughs> it up your ass. So, ha ha ha, we're good. <laughs> 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 that was funny, but whoever random, just said that. Random uncomfortable laughter for no reason. <laughs> um, so your movie Algorithm was a feature film that that you made, and I actually want to talk to you about it because we talked about it a lot over the festival. But um, <clears throat> you have kind of an interesting story, and the fact that your movie <clears throat> is called is called Algorithm, and you call it like the hacker movie. Is it is that a subtitle, or is that just like what you put on the poster so that people understood what it was? Uh, you know, we we weren't sure exactly what form of distribution we were going to do, and we're still not sure. Um, so uh, we wanted to use the the title, which is hard to spell, uh, as as kind of like the title. It is algorithm, but we also wanted to uh, include the branding of the website, which is thehackermovie.com. dot com. Ah, okay, yeah. that that's a stroke of pure genius. <laughs> oh, genius. What was lucky is actually getting that Inconceivable. Sight Seriously, how did you how did you swing that? I guess because there's not been a hack movie called the Hacker Movie, except for Hacker. Or, except or, uh, for hackers. I, I wanted Algorithm dot com, which was taken by like a Japanese design firm company, and they renew their lease on the on the URL once a year, which you wait for it, and then they buy it up again. So that kind of sucked. Really. Um, Really? Then there's like Algorithm the Movie or Algorithm Movie, and one of them was owned by Warner Brothers, and one of them was owned by some other guy, and I was just like, whatever. I'm so, I have to People can't spell that's... algorithm anyway, so let's do something They simpler. can't spell algorithm, right. It's A-L-G-O. <laughs> <laughs> right. A-L- I can see the poster right in my head. It's A-L-G-O. Well, it doesn't R-Y-T-H-M, look, it right? doesn't look like I, the I word T-H-M. rhythm is spelled R H Y, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not rhythm like as in. It's not that kind of rhythm. Music. I know. Yeah. So it's confusing. Well, don't snap at me. No. He's, <laughs> don't get mad at me for don't not get for, mad at me for Don't get mad at me because you know how to spell it and I don't. I have to apologize because while you're talking, I left. The, 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 dog the dog barged in. Barged in the room and I flicked it off with both of my hands. And I just kept flicking it off and flicking off. And it looked at me as if I, you know, berated it. <laughs> And yelled at it, and it, it cowered away in the, door. In, in, out of the room. But I did it by flicking it off. It was the amazing. The dog's an idiot. That's a great story, Brad. Will you tell it again, please? No. Anyway, I don't. I don't fault you for misspelling it. I don't even know how many times I've misspelled it on social media. Really? So it's hashtag misspelled algorithm. <laughs> is that is that your official hashtag? <laughs> no, the, the, I, I, I used algorithm uh, as the my. Some of the producers were like, "You need to put algorithm the movie or uh, the hacker movie or something." I was like, "No, dude. If we you just use the hashtag algorithm, then anytime somebody looks for algorithm, which is often among computer geeks, we get cross pollination." Huh? How about hashtag hack your ass off? No, that would that would have been a good one too, but we we weren't that creative. So, what I. I'm sh- I'm sure you told me what your background is when we were talking, but I didn't you say you're an engineer of some of some sort? Uh, I engineer reality. You engineer reality. What? Yeah. No. I I most of my majors uh, were most uh, of my majors. Philosoph- I know subsets of philosophy. Okay, I'm so, better than you. Well, your your <laughs> your movie was very sort of. Uh, Intellectually, yeah, thought provoked and um, eg- almost kind of existential and philosophical. Well, I appreciate um, that. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I thought so, and it was like a, almost like a meditation on a certain thing, as opposed to a, you know, a, like a, I don't know the way to say it, but it's like a meditation on a concept. Yeah, you know, from beginning to end. Cool. Is it so, very educational? That's, 
<laughs> That's high praise. Both of those are That's high praise. High praise. <laughs> oh, that, yes. Yeah, Nicholas Cage. Much deserved. So tell Thank me, you. tell me, um, first of all, how you came up with the idea of the movie, how you how you got it made, and all that stuff. Because you know, like the rest of indie filmmaker out, indie filmmakers out there, their movies don't get made the exact same way as the next guy. And yeah, you, I, sort of, sort of you know, I had this, I had this giant kind of monologue that I was going to give at the Academy Awards that apparently doing the SAG New Media makes it inadmissible for the Academy Awards because what the SAG New Media agreement, which is what we made Algorithm under, and the Academy have like contradictory rules. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, but I thought about as I was watching the awards ceremony at the Orlando Film Festival, I was like, the speech that I was going to give at the Academy, now not admissible, uh, is would be totally moot here because everything that I had to say about like independence and just getting up and doing it, much like one of your podcasts said, uh, these people are already doing. Like we're all operating at pretty much the same budget, with the same just get up and go and do it uh, mentality. Um, so that's that's kind of it. it. You, you you there like I before I started writing. Well, actually. I wrote one screenplay that sucked. And, um, <laughs> Just one? Oh, you're my yeah. hero. I wrote it a lot of times. <laughs> I wrote it a lot of times, though. Um, that was my problem. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was. I don't know, Brad. I don't. You seem like a funny guy. So, um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I don't know. You what sound you like see. you would look funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, your, your, your Cartman impression alone wins me over. <laughs> Say thank um, you. I did over it. Say my thank you. <laughs> so, so when I, when I, uh, I tried writing novels and short stories for a while, uh, and, um, for like years and, um, sending out, sending out short stories to the various markets and magazines. And I, and I realized I don't know, there was this mentality that set in in my brain that I send it out and I kind of have to wait for permission. Mm. Yeah. Um, but some somehow, sometimes I wouldn't send things out, but I would always go downstairs and check the mailbox like someone is going to recognize my genius without putting anything out there and right. call me and contact me and say, oh, you know, we read your <laughs> crappy short story. We'd like you to, here's $50 million, go live your dream. Or I've whatever had that, that same problem. You mean where you check the mail even though you haven't No, done where anything? I just assume that yeah, at some it. point somebody should realize, hey, you're smart. Let me pay you money. Yeah, but that and, and, and kind of kind of I, I read a blog post by my, my fellow filmmaker friend and actually former Floridian Earl Newton. Yeah, I know Earl uh, Newton. You do? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I know, he's he's I know a very him. good friend of mine and a collaborator right. on algorithm. Awesome. Well tell him I said hello. I will do that. And that's really weird. That's random. Uh, I know. so Earl Earl wrote a blog post about how we don't need to stop waiting for permission. Yeah. And I really oh, took yeah. that to heart. And I did stop waiting for permission. And just real quick, not to interrupt, but I am. <laughs> I realized, you know, during the Orlando Film Festival and, uh, you know, even after watching your film and hearing your story and hanging out with you and just being around, you know, I, I, it just like an epiphany. It hit me. Like, dude... You you know that you're a great director and whatever, and you can do all these things. But until you stop, you know, helping other people with their stuff and start, you know, if you don't start putting, what do you call it, cashing in all the, you know, credit you put in by helping them and do something, you know, put something out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I was inspired to do exactly what you're saying. Yeah. To stop waiting mm -hmm. and okay, now just do it. You're saying if a Brad if a if a Brad falls in the forest, does it actually make a sound? If Not if it happening? doesn't write I don't know, the I script. Wasn't there. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't there. So yeah, in fact, I remembered. Now that now we're talking about it, I remember I saw um, Earl Newton and Matt Wallace's name in your in your credits. Oh, you know Matt too. I I know Matt not even as good as I know Earl and I don't know Earl very very well but I don't I've met Earl but I haven't met Matt okay I, I need to ask now because you mentioned these names and I have no idea who they are what did they do in your film so I at least have a reference yeah they, they okay that, no that's a, that's a yeah. perfect segue other than being the entire liberator of my life or Earl Newton with that blog <laughs> post the the enabler of stop asking for permission yeah oh um, okay permission. Earl and and Matt uh became friends of mine when Earl Move, they, they actually both moved out to LA to kind of get into the industry yeah. and um, are, are making a, a swell go of it out here. 
Gee, shucks. Gee, uh, yes, swell go. That's a good one. I'm gonna um, <laughs> they, we, we met when they came out here, uh-huh. and um, we became friends because we're both, we're, we're both we're, all three of us are struggling to just to find a way in or to, to, to make our lives the way we want them to be as mm-hmm. creatives, you know, mm-hmm. uh, constantly making stuff. And so um, as, I, as I grew in friendship with them, uh, they started saying, if you, if you write stuff or if you do stuff, uh, let me know and I'll help you out. Uh-huh. Uh, and we just kind of helped each other out. Uh, you know, I would give Earl tips and help him with his stuff whenever he needed it uh, and encourage him and, and vice versa. And same with Matt Wallace. Um, so when I got the script for Algorithm, uh, or, or it was actually originally called The Root Kit, but I, I gave it to Matt. Uh, and Matt's a good enough writer uh, that kind of when he said that th- it was like a really good script, uh, it, it really gave me the courage I needed to to send it to other filmmaker friends who are more in the industry. Yeah. Matt's a smart uh, writer. He's a smart writer. He's yeah. yeah. And he's, he just, he just is published this slinger saga mm-hmm. series. That's yep. it's that so weird. That amazing. You're, you're like, good you writer. are, you are talking to me about my Twitter feed. It's so weird that we know these, the, these two people, uh, we know these two, you know them better than I do probably at this point, because I really only met Earl the one time, but, um, had a lot of respect for him because he basically did say, uh, like he behaved in a way of like not to ask permission. His show, and I'm trying to think of the Stranger Stranger Things, things. yeah, um, was killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I and I and I actually first met. I didn't meet Earl when he came out here, although he didn't remember meeting me until I refreshed his memory. We actually met at Balticon uh, after a <laughs> screening of his uh, the most recent. I don't know if it's the final or not, but the most recent episode yeah. of Stranger Things. Now, I'm sorry, but did you say Baldicon? Because I noticed that you shave your head and you're bald. So is it for bald people or what? Baldicon. I, I am balding. <laughs> I am not completely bald yet. Oh. Thanks for... Uh, no, it's Baldicon. It's, I said it's shave your head bald. I didn't say you're freaking bald. It's so weird because I've been to Balticon <laughs> two times and... Uh, we we must have I just we weren't there on the same year. So last time I was there was like two or three years ago. Okay. So so weird. So weird. I like with six degrees of separation. It's like <laughs> actually two. Yeah. Two More like six points. degrees of desperation. Okay, so we sidetracked you. <laughs> Go back to talking about how you got your movie made. <laughs> well, did we finish with who those people were? <laughs> <laughs> oh right, right, right. Oh, yeah. okay. So, uh, so Earl Newton is a is a screenwriter and director. Okay. Uh, Matt Wallace is a full time writer. He's one of the few people I know who makes a living full time off of his writing, mm-hmm. uh, which is not an easy thing to do. Um, and so I got it to them. I got my script to them. And they were like, "This is awesome. This is really good. This is really good. You need to do this." Right. Okay. Uh, awesome. So you you got like some validation from it's from nice. Some yeah. 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 And they were and 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 having seen Stranger Things, which I really respect because of of I know what tight constraints Earl was under at the time. I was like, this is good. If he if he validates it, then I should totally go ahead. Same yes. with Matt Wallace had written some amazing stories by that time. Yeah. Um. And he too was in the upper <clears throat> echelon of podcasting, which to me had the airs of celebrity. Exactly. Um, that's how that's how I felt about people like J.C. Hutchins and um, yeah, Scott yeah, yeah. Sigler, Scott Sigler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I know both of those people. Good, good people. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so tell us like where you got the idea, like why your movie is called Algorithm, where you got the idea, and how you set about getting it made. Okay, uh, I, I'm friends with a professor at the local university one of the many universities i stopped going to i stopped going to and uh, he's a sociologist and he and i were talking about uh how technology how people like bill gates are coming up and saying that uh there aren't enough people who are technologically competent to fill all of the technological jobs coming up in the united states our our education system simply is not producing them enough and i thought well if you're going to do that, if you're going to, if you're going to get people interested in technology, they have to have two ideas. One, that working in technology is a viable field, that there's somebody out there who actually makes the video games that they play. And two, uh, that computers are cool. 
Uh, and the best way to do that, I thought, would be to make a movie. And I, I said to him, and I was like, I'm not going to do anything with this, but what you should do is you should contact the NSA and see if you can just license some of their stories and tell them what you want to do because they're going to want it too uh, because the more you know, talented people they get in our society, the better off they are. Uh, so I said that to professor and my my professor friend, and and nothing came of it for years. But it sat in the back of my mind for a long time. Uh, and eventually, uh, I was looking for an idea of what to do, and um, I was like, I should do a hacker movie, uh, just because. Um, this was probably 2011 or 12 at the latest. And I started, uh, I, I have some friends who from my various universities days, um, who are very good at computers. And I, I contacted them. I was like, where do I even begin researching to find out what's possible in the computer world? And he recommended, actually, uh, a podcast by a guy named Steve Gibson, which I, which I mentioned at the, yes. at the Q&A. Security um, Now. Yeah, Steve Gibson does an amazing podcast yes. called Security Now. Uh, it is not entry-level stuff, but uh, if you just immerse yourself in it, you can start to pick up the lingo. Uh, it's just like reading good sci-fi. It just drops you into the world. Um, he does make it as, as accessible as possible. He doesn't get into uh, finite math or uh, infinite number theory or things like that. But he does, he, does, he does talk about very technical things. So I listened to that podcast I, for like six months, just catching up on all of his previous episodes and getting up to date on what was possible. Uh, after that, I... I sat down and I wrote a script about a computer hacker who, uh, a contract computer hacker, same character, Will, um, and uh, a, a virus that a, 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 a hedge fund manager creates in or, and basically installs a key logger on everybody's device. And what a key logger is, is it's, it would be a bug that sits on your uh, computer or mobile phone uh, and it keeps track of everything that you do. So every move you make across the screen, every key that you touch, it tracks and sends back to the main database. So it, it it's keeps like track a, of what it's you spyware, do. It's spyware, basically. Yeah, it's it's spyware. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, it sounds cooler to call it a bug, though. I, um, <laughs> when I was watching your movie, I, I'm not a computer savvy person. I mean, I know how to use the editing software that I use and I know how to save a file and all that stuff. I'm, I'm, I would say I'm like up to date on like everyday usage of a computer. But if it comes time for me to have to like fix a hard drive or any of that stuff, it's like the same thing with my car, take it someplace, yeah. have him do it. And, uh, but your, so your movie actually felt smarter than me. You know what I mean? If well, like and, and that's it, 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 before I wrote it, before I did the research, I was I, I could replace a hard drive and I could run, you know, disk utilities. But I wasn't much further ahead than you are. It's yeah. the research. They say write what you know, but I say write what you love and learn what you need to know. That works. Yes. too. Yeah. That sounds good. I'm going to quote you on that. That's I why I have a ninth grade education. <laughs> Yeah, Brad was. <laughs> <laughs> I took the GED. Brad took the GED this. and said, "Screw this shit." <laughs> I want to do production. <laughs> you know, uh, I've been listening to Brad talk, and you're having a lot of the same ideas that I have. So I, I'm going to have to say you're pretty smart. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't interrupt you, but while you were talking about all that, technique. I tend to, I tend to be rather monotonous when I get into lecture mode. <laughs> no, no, so no, sorry well, about that. No, no but it's <laughs> just, it's just amazing that Brad actually didn't interrupt you. That's never happened. I know, before. but I, I was thinking, oh yeah, I, I know how to do a hard drive and all that uh, stuff, and I, you know. I was like, well, I'm smarter than the average bear. Oh, yes, Brad. We if all, you we if all you actually it. have a hard drive problem and you need stuff replaced and you don't mm -hmm. want to send it out, Steve Gibson actually makes one of the better hard drive utility repairs. Nice. But, and and I actually have a you know a, like a broke a taken apart hard drive thing where if a hard drive you know if I need to get to it like the computer breaks down, mm -hmm. I can just plug it into the little thing and then make it work and recover the information. Yeah, that's basically what what it, you can't take it apart because it's yeah. all vacuum sealed and you don't want to expose it to the air. But yeah, that's 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 what he does anyway. But so, I just want to say real <laughs> quick though, side railed our entire conversation. No, right? but you can Movies. learn. Movies. I mean, he and I both learned all of this stuff because we watched. I know, but we're talking about learning what you don't know or whatever. I know. Okay. Um, learn what you need to know. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's cool because when he talked about 
um, security now and what is on and when you look for podcasts it's called the twit network which is yeah they're awesome what is I, twit stand any for? subject you want to learn that's technical go to the twit start at twit network oh yeah and they're, I, they're brilliant people there yeah i've been watching since uh when they were tech tv you yeah. know on satellite um, leo yeah. laporte does this interview series called triangulation that is among the best interviews i've ever heard yeah. and they I'm, get the absolute smartest people yeah, and, uh, in in the tech industry on there. And you, speaking of Leo Laporte, I just want to give him a shout out because he's like the godfather of podcasting. I mean, he's the one that got out there, got everybody into it. At least all yeah, of us it, nerds. He's <laughs> actually yeah his his model for for making podcasting profitable is I'm I'm watching it. Other people adopt it. So the oh, guys, yeah. he's he's the place to go for podcasting for sure, or pretty much anything in tech. Start at Leo. So had you made. A movie in any form before this? Did you have like short films or anything, or is this what you decided to do first? No, I, I, uh, the first thing I made was a, uh, uh, I think, I think it was a feature length movie that, about a, an out of work actor who, uh, pretends to go on a hunger strike and post video blog of it on YouTube for attention. Okay. Yeah, for All attention right. in order to get famous. That's the most pretentious reason to go on a hunger strike ever. It's perfect, no, he did, he it's was perfect for an it, so, actor. Yeah. Oh, he was faking it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that was the first movie. And I knew nothing about it, about making movies, yeah. um, except, you know, I watch a lot of movies. And I, I had studied the craft. Yeah. But I just, I wanted, to, I wanted to do it. So the cool thing about that process was that I learned everything that's necessary from scheduling to coordinating with actors to casting to directing, to writing the script, to breaking the script down into manageable components that are editable, to file management, all that stuff. Uh, oh. That project taught me all that. Can you see it anywhere? Is it online someplace? No. Or are you keeping it closer to the chest? <laughs> like, I am going to release it when I am famous and somebody is interested in my garage van days. Right, okay, okay. It's one of those, yeah. Yeah, that's, but that's where it's at. Do you, so so are, after that, I got hired to, to make some uh, industrial videos and commercials huh. for some stuff in the automotive industry, mostly nice. internal stuff that nobody will ever see. Uh, moved on to some web videos for, for companies, just small stuff for their sites. I uh, made a music video, and then I did some shorts for a friend and made a couple of my own shorts. Uh, and then I was just like, time to move on. Huh. So you've made other shorts, like other yeah. short films too. Like yeah. where can people see those? I, uh, are you keeping them guarded I, as well? I, I, I have two really bad branding things that I've been using. One is my own name, which forget trying to pronounce. It's impossible to spell. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so people will put John, an H in Jonathan, so it, it'll be J O H N A T H A N, yeah. or they'll say Jonathan, T H O N. Yeah, uh, and then Schieffer, you know, forget about it. So I need to rebrand my name. I was maybe like Jonathan Bob or something. Jonathan Bob, or Schieffer, uh, S H E E F E R. Schieffer. Sure, yeah, or F U R or something <laughs> like that. Um, uh, and and then my production company is latin which is never taken because <laughs> why would you choose latin because it's a dead language and americans are right yeah, but ignorant. everyone so, that uses witchcraft uh, uses it but if you go to my production company's <laughs> website which is spiritusvult.com i'm just going to make sure that this works uh the there is a uh, movies section uh-huh uh, and it talks about the various movies that i've i've made and uh, the stuff that's out there. Um, and it also has a contact section mm -hmm. where you can find... <laughs> where, sorry, Google you're going to tell us... Uh, with, the proper, with the proper spelling of your name or... What, what? The your, your website? Con your contacts section, does it have the proper spelling of your name or is it... I'm dyslexic, so that's a horrible question. It looks, it looks right. <laughs> it looks right to me. So, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but it sounded like you were going to start start to say, "We have a homepage and an about us page and a contact me page." <laughs> what? You gonna... so, so how did? Okay, so your short films did, were they the sort of things that you did like Kickstarters for, or did you? We um, have a YouTube page where you can see the stuff, and okay, the stuff cool. that I want you to see will be there. Okay, awesome. Uh, awesome. Just, hey, we need a YouTube page. Google my name and, and it'll it'll show up if Google likes me that day. Yeah. 
So Crazy your short man. films, did you were they things you just like made by yourself, like with your camera, and you got some actors, or did you do like a, you know, here's the DP, here's the crew, and the actors and all that stuff. Uh, I had, um, I cast. Uh, there were three actors that I cast out of Los Angeles for one of the short, the, the best of the short films called um, Fidelis. Uh huh. And uh, one of the actors and I became pretty good friends. And uh, he needed a favor, so uh, for a project he was working on, so I made about four or five short films for him also, huh. just to help him with his work because he basically volunteered his time for me right 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 favors you yeah that's yeah, how, yeah. that's how barter yeah. system. so that's how so that's saying. that's that's the best of my stuff i had a dp for a while um i was kind of he's a still photographer i was training to do to do video and to to think of it as a series of you know you know what you know the difference yeah anyway uh training him and then he he he, he fled he moved on to a boat <laughs> he fled <laughs> yeah he moved on to a boat and left uh-huh. the country yeah uh that's fleeing that's yeah. Clean. <laughs> I'm clean. So, so that's that's cool. So you sort of yeah, you did the regular I'm gonna make some short films, make all my mistakes there, figure stuff out, learn all that, like film school. Film school. There's okay, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about an algorithm, and it's give me a, a momentary rant, but I think it's necessary. It is is in this country we have this idea that money is the great I don't know determiner of value and truth yes and it's 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 a lie that we bought into uh-huh. that, that that capitalism is cent- central to our existence and that we need money that to define our our personal value mm-hmm. um and that idea is is what was limiting me creatively and yeah. the moment i broke from that and it's it's still a constant process because everywhere in society we hear it that that you need to have this financial backing and the people who bring the money are the people who are in control and should be, that's a lie. That's wrong. Uh, and it creates bad art. Mm. Um, and, and, and breaking free of that idea, uh, when, when I had a good script, uh, the people didn't care about the money anymore. Uh, the, the script became the thing that they wanted. They wanted to be a part of something that was good. And I was listening. I, I, I screened algorithm personally, and it, with with as many ac- of the actors that I could get in a in, in a room individually, or uh-huh. uh, like one at a time. I went to their houses and showed it to them because I was like, "This is what we're doing," and and they were all very proud of it. But uh, two of two of the actors were together, and I happened to be using the restroom. But I heard them talking, and they said to each other, and they had done other stuff. They're like, "Finally, we're in a movie that doesn't suck." Yes. Uh, and the, and and I had I had created this whole profit share model of making the movie, uh, and I was really jazzed about it because like we're going to make a million dollars and we're all going to get rich and none none of this above the line below the line crap or no yes. no elitist stuff that you hear about in Hollywood. We're going to do it the right way. And the more crew I talked to, uh, the more they said we don't expect to get any money out of this because no money ever comes in anything, right. and that's just part of being a creative person. Uh, and that's not why we're doing it. We're doing it because we love the project and we want to do something that's good and this is good. So the, the quality of the script became the currency Yes, that people were working for well, to be a part of something that's good. Yeah. You hear it. I hear it. I hear it a lot of times too, when I'm, uh, you know, looking for actors or whatever. And I, what I get a lot of is because I kind of feel the same way, um, uh, and I also feel like if you do what comes natural to you and you write about what what you want to write about, that the passion comes through in that and it, it ends up on the page as opposed to writing something that you think will be popular or you think will make you the next you know success or whatever. You write about something that's emotional and true and that you care about. And people respond to that. I hear that a lot of times. People are like, "This is I don't get to, I don't get to have the opportunity to work on something like this, you know, a lot because it's normally just like the next slasher film or the next, you know, bikini babes from outer space, you know, right. stuff." Yeah. And actors are actually look. They don't want to. They don't want to be actors. <clears throat> and I kind of look at it. I kind of look at it like the actors are the ones that say it a lot, but not, nobody wants to be creative so that they can work on junk. 
you know. Right. Yeah. We on, all do it because we love it. Yeah, and we and you do and you end up doing stuff just so that you can say you gotta did eat. you got to eat, you got to, you know, you got to keep uh sharpening the saw or whatever keeping yourself, you know, in practice and everything so you're not rusty so that when something good comes along you can actually be at the top of your game. But I think uh, I think one of the best examples of what you're talking about right now is a dude out of Texas named Jeff Nichols. Mhm. Uh, he did. He did a. Uh, uh, basically, it's kind of like a three part series of of Texas and Arkansas uh, shotgun stories. Uh huh. Um, and then it was take shelter, and then the most recent one is mud. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that's and why he's I mean. and it's exactly what good. you're talking about. It's yeah. not a story that you'd think you would be interested in, but Jeff absolutely cares and is capturing the cap culture in a way that. That is amazing and brilliant and beautiful, yeah. and I love everything that he's done. Yeah, I need to go back and see the other ones. I've seen Mud, and I thought it was great. I, I, the acting, the everything about it was um, nice. And yeah, simple. there's not a weak point in any of his projects that I've seen. It's like quiet and still Except. and not boring. Yeah, exactly. Because, and you wouldn't think it. You wouldn't think a two-hour yeah. movie about the plains of Texas would be interesting, but the yeah. dude does it, and it's yeah. brilliant. What were you exactly thinking? like you're saying, though. It's that's what that's what he knows. That's what he loves, and he's good at it. He he said there's no fault in anything he's done, like, but those car commercials are retarded. I'm not. That's <laughs> Jeff Nichols didn't direct those, though. By the way, you need to see the Jim Carrey version of that from SNL. You're talking. It about is freaking hilarious. You're talking about someone completely different from the person. He runs over about. the guy from the Allstate commercial and just keeps talking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's talking about. Jim Carrey made. No, I'm talking. Yes, he's talking about a filmmaker who made a movie. You're he talking, said Matthew McConaughey. He said Jeff Nichols, who made the movie that Matthew McConaughey was in. I got Not, bored. You're an idiot. I'm sorry. You are. A, I'm so sorry. I was bored. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. <laughs> God. Okay. So, a couple, a couple other things. I want because I want to talk about your the way your movie looks, and I want to we want to talk I, about the music, and we want to talk about how you distribute. There, there is it. one other thing I, I, I want to highlight, though. Okay. Uh, when I finished writing the script uh, for the root kit, which was about the the worm, the virus, the bug, whatever we want to call right. it, the spider, the robot, the robot, um, yeah, the robot, the digital robot. Uh, I told Steve Gibson about it. I said. You are the primary source of research. Uh, and then I ran a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, and we, we aimed at a $50,000 goal, and we didn't make it. We got $34,000, um, really? which is, means nothing. We got nothing. Right. Um, oh, yeah. So right. I went back to the drawing board, rewrote the script, rebranded it as Algorithm, uh, and made it slightly more intense. Uh, and that's, that's the script that got made. Huh. We so- also crowdfunded it. But yeah, not nearly to that extent, not right. that much. Did you do when you crowdfunded the second time around? Was it Kickstarter still, or was it Indiegogo? You know, I I did something stupid uh, uh, when I did was running my Kickstarter campaign. The analytics on Kickstarter died three days after uh, Kickstarter. Uh, we launched the project, which basically means I had no idea where things were coming from. Huh. Um. And then, uh, so, so I was like kind of pissed at Kickstarter at the time. So I went to Indiegogo, uh, and that was a very, very bad mistake. Really? Okay. Yeah. How come? Um, nobody, uh, people don't respect Indiegogo nearly as much as they right. do Kickstarter. Right. Okay. So it's the- uh, and, and it's the likelihood of raising even a quarter of the amount of money that you would raise on Kickstarter is very low. Right. Especially when you're... Uh, you know, somebody like you or me, like not not a ton of people know about or anything like that. It's not like you have like celebrity you can use to lean across. Well, I mean, Steve Gibson is a celebrity in his field. The guy has you know seventy thousand listeners a week, which is pretty good. Right. Well, that's that's true. That's um, and you, and we got six hundred backers on Kickstarter, but we got like a hundred and fifty on Indiegogo. Even though I messaged the Kickstarter backers that the yeah. Indiegogo campaign was happening, they're just. They didn't. They didn't follow. It's so hard because so. you can never tell what's going to click with somebody and what isn't. And I guess it's it's all about timing because um, something that got a lot more traction the first go around, even though it didn't like go all the way, um, you know, struggled to get even that much attention the second time around, even with a completely different you know approach. Yeah, and the and the script was much much better, and we yeah. had a much better cast and crew the second time around too, um, because. Because I, I was, you know, we did casting the official way. We went to L.A. We put it in all the casting pages. We had a audition room. We went through all that. 
Huh. Uh, so the caliber of actor is just in in algorithm is 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 spectacular. Then you did that before you even crowdfunded. Uh, they were happening at the same time. They're happening at the same because time because of the okay. because of the time constraints I was working with. Right. Okay. Awesome. So where did you meet your DP? Because that's one thing that I really that jumped out at me from the start was your movie lo- is yes. gorgeous. It's gorgeous. We, we were sitting there. I was sitting by Mike, and that was, was all, like one of the first things yeah. we we were jealous. Commented is yeah. like you know because we've been making all kinds of stuff, and then so when we saw it, we were like. One thing about this movie, whether we end up liking it or not, is it's gorgeous. Yeah, it looks really good. I mean, uh, that, was, that was in the first few minutes. You know, like we were we were literally just yes. This looks good. Dude. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, I uh, it was it, I I met the DP. Here's a direct answer to your question, but I want to qualify it. Um, I met the DP because uh, I had met another guy in Los Angeles, a, a, a fellow filmmaker named Sean Hackett. And he has he he actually filmed a movie in Florida. His name is Hackett, working on a hacker film. Uh, uh, he's just not working on it. You don't pay attention. <laughs> but he he gave me some great notes, and then he hooked me up with a couple of his friends that he'd worked with also in the on the Florida film, uh-huh. uh, the Matarisi brothers, uh-huh. who who, uh, who are based out of San Francisco, which is where I decided to to place the script. Yes. Rootkit was originally supposed to be in Southern California and New York City. Uh, but I decided San Francisco is a better place for algorithm, so that's where I put it. And I needed people in San Francisco, and and Sean hooked me up with the Matarises, and they they are very good at what they do. Uh, they they were starting up a production company in San Francisco. They, it was I think their second film that year. They're very productive people. Yes. Uh, one of the brothers is a gaffer, and the other is a grip, which is why like the lighting is is amazing yeah. in algorithm because of those two guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and they had they had worked with the crew in San Francisco a lot, and it's a very tight knit community in San. Like it's not not nearly as many productions as even in Orlando, or as I mean, there's way more in Orlando than there are in San Francisco. Huh. So, um, uh, Universal Studios, <laughs> notwithstanding. Right. Right. Um, so we got uh, people because of them that are just really talented people. Uh, across the board um one of the guys who worked on algorithm uh was in uh i keep forgetting the name it was a movie that was nominated for an academy award the year we were working on algorithm huh just to have that guy there uh but the dp uh was friends with the matarises uh and they had worked together and they sent me his reel and i'm like this guy's a genius yeah Uh, satsuki murashige yeah. He is he's brilliant. Uh I saw the thing that sold me is he did a I don't know if it was officially for uh, them or um if he just did it for fun but he did a Sigaros video. And I watched and I was like this guy has this is he understands beauty. Yeah, he understands beauty. Well, keep them but like that that trio there sounds like they, you know, uh because the movie just looks good and it's not like it's like flowery or pretty. You know what I mean? It's not like it's like warm and fuzzy like your movie it's got a distinct like colder look to it Mm -hmm. and you know i won't i guess i wouldn't say bleak but um you know it's a little it's It's stark stark yeah 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 that's a good word and but it's 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 so well i mean there's not there's not a flaw in the frame you know what i mean it's like well we cut all the flaws out there were some bad shots they they didn't make it in well, I mean, see, that's what editing is for. But <laughs> no, but but one of the things I did beforehand, like I didn't understand beauty either, and as a director, it was kind of important. I knew that if I was going to be collaborating with a cinematographer, I needed to have one. So I took my uh, the film camera that I was using, not the film camera, the digital camera that I had been using for all the music videos and all the shorts, the Canon T two I, and for like six months or a year, while I was researching for the script of algorithm, I was taking still photos. And just of everything I could find, everything I could think of, and trying to see what photos I liked and which ones I didn't like, and then to figure out why, so that when I needed to create a photo that I did like, I knew how to do it. I knew what were the critical components. Yeah. I got really analytical. And so uh, when when Satsuki and I started working together, I was like, this is my my aesthetic. Um, And he's like, well, here's how I think we should move the camera. Uh, and and we collaborated, and uh, uh, you know, 
I probably set up two thirds of the shots, but you know, it, some of his camera work is spectacular. Yeah, and I have nothing but praise for Satsuki. Yeah, me either. Or I mean, <laughs> me like eat also either. Yeah. So you know, we were talking about about your movie when the night the night that we got to see it, and you have a lot of shots in the city, like out and about in town and around town. And, you know, I'd asked you if you, um, <laughs> if, if you stole those shots, like in the subway. Yeah. And you, and you said yes. And a good portion of, and if you, if you're okay talking about it, like a good portion of your movie takes place outside, you know what I mean? It's like a, and and to realize that you gorillaed those shots and like took the risk to actually go out and shoot something he hacked them is like he he hacked the movie yeah here's it, the thing is that is that in Los Angeles uh, they're pretty much fascists um, if they see you they'll shut you down um, in San Francisco that city is extremely film friendly um, aside from just all of the rolling hills making it cinematically beautiful to look at yeah definitely uh the the city itself the film commission there those people are amazing uh especially on the indie film level um they they had a a deal at the time where they would reimburse you up to half a million dollars of your permit fees and police and that kinds of stuff and including any property rentals you have on the city property if you're below a certain budget um they also allowed for uh, permits because our, we were below a certain budget and because our crew was always less than a certain number. Uh, we got permits for $100 a day, and that wasn't a location specific. It was anywhere in the city for 24 hours, uh, and there was a 24-hour submission and turnaround time. So oh. the city was amazing, so and the police do- officers saw us all the time, and they just didn't stop us at all because we weren't, we weren't doing anything that was – bothering anybody like we weren't standing in the street and when we were it wasn't obnoxious it wasn't dangerous um and we were safe so uh it it really depends on where you do it changes how dangerous it is i've heard while i was at the festival i was hearing similar things about new york city as long as you're not like interfering with anything they're pretty cool huh like if you want to shut down a street that's a different issue but if you if you don't need to stop traffic, if you're just going to shoot on the sidewalk, uh, they're okay with it. You have in your movie there was this shot where, and it was when I, this is what I've been thinking about since since we talked about um, how you shot the exteriors. There's a shot with the two main character, well, the main character and someone else, and I can't remember exactly. We're hiding behind a car, and off in the yeah. distance there was another car parked. And you have two perfectly timed out scenes happening at the same time where you have the people that were getting into a house and taking something out of the house. And then they were, they were getting things back and forth to the car while the main characters were in front talking about something and watching. They, they actually it, went in to get the person that was in there because it was a setup kind of yeah. by the main character to see if people were right. really you know after him if it was just in his head exactly and the shot was so just by itself beautiful but at the same time the fact that you basically i don't know i i i guess you were you used the term stole the shots like that was easily the scariest moment for the entire project for me really because other than other than when i showed matt wallace my script because i didn't know what it was (laughs) worth at the time uh like and i hadn't been validated in any way yeah uh that moment was was the scariest because we didn't have permission to do it. <laughs> and if you get uh, shut down, you're you're screwed. Yeah, you're and, well, it, no, and you got it's, a it's, bunch it's, of people running into the house and kidnapping someone. <laughs> right, right. So <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's it's much worse than that. Um, <laughs> we had knocked on the people's door that we were shooting in front of, and nobody answered. So uh, somebody, one of the neighbors, came by, and we said, well, "Yeah, we're filming something here. Uh, does do you guys care?" And they're like, "No, we don't care." Uh, but being on a park property in California is a misdemeanor after 10 o'clock. And it was definitely after 10 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. Um, so not to count if getting caught shooting without a permit. Yeah, it also, was actually yeah. like misdemeanor. So there was that. Then we were staging a kidnapping in downtown San Francisco <laughs> yeah. in front of people's houses that we didn't have permission to use. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we had to do it twice. 
and like it was just it was it scared the crap out of me the whole time I was like nervous but you know uh, w- when we designed the shot we everything was choreographed yeah. everything was designed and deliberate yeah um and of course you know Satsuki nailed the the shot we did yeah. two we had one good usable take and he he nailed it perfectly yeah i think that's my easily my favorite shot i mean the risk was you know now that you're sitting here you know a free man and everything like <laughs> the risk was worth it because it's beautiful you know and it's timed out perfectly and it's such an interesting shot because there's so much going on at one time it's it, you know just i mean framing and all that stuff that's that's a given but like the timing of everything and how the stuff in the background is a little soft and it's like happening while something else is happening it was just i loved it that was my favorite shot in your whole movie thank you and uh, I wanted to. I mean, did you? I didn't want to. I'm, I'm an you interrupt here. You mean you want to interrupt and change the subject back to music? Yes, you're <laughs> okay, a genius. Okay. Yeah, because your music was also brilliant. Well, and- you. It reminded me because that scene before those people came up, there was a. It, it, it was you were kind of waiting, like the two people were yeah. talking and waiting to see if someone would come or what would happen. And there's a lot of shots where it, you're. You're kind of waiting in the scene, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because you're following this guy and he's talking about stuff, and uh, I think in his head. But anyways, um, and that's where a lot of the you you get to notice the beauty, I guess, of a lot of the shots because the camera is staying on that shot longer than we're used to with the Hollywood cuts. And right, it's brave fast. enough to just sit there and let it happen. Yeah, yeah. and and I bring that up because that's also what brought our attention to the sound or you know the, the score yeah. because you know we're kind of waiting and watching and you know listening to the guy but at the same time we're like doo, 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 doo. you know there's music <laughs> going on and i remember I'm this is sure. what it was like i'm not sure that's what it sounds <laughs> like <laughs> that's not what it sounds like but like the <laughs> do that i have ears <laughs> it's the you know but you know how the dial up <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Anyways. Right, right. Bang, bang. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound anything like that. I'm just being <laughs> stupid. But um, you uh, whispered over to me like, oh, man, that soundtrack is really yeah. interesting. Because I guess it was, there was a methodical rhythm to it. And, yeah. and I noticed the pattern and it, that it came up like several times in the film. Yeah, and I yeah. said, oh, he's just repeating a pattern over and over. But actually, <laughs> we found out after watching the film later and talking to you that there was more behind it than just yeah. some sounds some guy made right yeah uh yeah there's there's in the end scene um there's a there's a program called rx i think it's i want to say rx3 might be rx8 but i think it's rx3 uh that allows you to take images uh oh and, yeah and put them into uh, what's called a spectral analyzer, which which a spectral analyzer is basically uh, it's kind of like a waveform analyzer, was, except it also shows volume. Yeah. So um, a waveform analyzer, you know, it just shows the waveform, but the the spectral analyzer adds color to show the intensity of the volume. Right. Um, so it kind of turns it into like. Ones and zeros audio wise, right? Well, it's already, I mean, they're already doing that anyway, as based on its 44,000 cycle per second thing. Mm -hmm. But, but the, the spectral analyzer adds color. And what, what RX3 or whatever it is does is allows you to take an image, uh, and import it as a spectral waveform, which then becomes audio. Huh. Which is, just cool so, in and of itself. Yeah, it's freaking itself, awesome. Yeah. I yeah, love yeah. technology. Yeah, I love technology. <laughs> uh, so, so what that allowed uh, Stu Kennedy, the composer, to do is the last scene. There's a sound that goes kind of like, and what that sound is is uh, he decided he wanted to put the NSA logo in the soundtrack. <laughs> so that's that's what the NSA logo sounds like. And I said to Stu, I was like, can we even legally do this? I mean, technically, we're violating copyright. And he's like, no, they copyrighted the image, not the sound of it. Yeah. Not the sound of the image. That's so, that's, Ouch. that's kind of, uh, that's kind of like. It's so logical. It's so nerdy. I know. And out there, but so also cool. It's like. Uh, like if Data from Star Trek was going to make music, it would be like that. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like layers. There's layers of 
you know, you can look Complexity, at it from one compl- yeah. You look at it from one level and you look at it from another level and it's two different things, but it's the same thing. One of the things what? I was trying to capture it's, with the soundtrack was to, like you said, to create a, a, an emotion that's a, that is like a meditation on, on computer hacking and a lot of other, obviously, metaphorical things that I put in there as a philosopher. But, but the, 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 the soundtrack needed to, to basically bring the audience in to the headspace of a computer hacker. And oftentimes, uh, computer hackers are portrayed as either ridiculously selfish people or as crazy people who only listen to uh, industrial or or grindcore metal. Yeah, and drink uh, and do and eat donuts and 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 I know techno. quite a few hackers, and I don't know any of them who code to industrial. Yeah, uh, they all code. Most of the guys I know code to like eighty synth pop or J pop. I knew it. Or classical music or German or techno. Like that. Yeah, because the because the. the, the uh, Soothing because is it because the soothing like rhythmic like mathematical? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, so 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 I wanted you to create that kind of music, and <laughs> that's um, how the score is, right? Didn't you mention that the? Well, the wild thing is, like I found out, is 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 because of the what happened when we released the movie. Um, a lot of computer hackers and coders are listening to the soundtrack which is now available on the hackermovie.com for sale for two dollars if is you it, want it is it really yeah we put because, it up okay because last time i asked you <laughs> you were like oh well i'll let you know when it's up there and like you, you should- know what i it wasn't up when you asked and i was like mike likes it and he's a good guy i'm yeah. gonna do him a favor yeah. yeah he totally perked up like he was slouching back in his seat and he yeah. was like oh and he's all Dude, st- <laughs> i i write to that kind of music i mean not it's not always like that but i like write with something that doesn't have words in it like movie scores a lot of times i put i put on just repeat while i'm writing i'm the exact same way thinking the same while i'm watching a movie i'm like this score is is going to be perfect to write to Mm -hmm. i'm gonna say man you should charge more for it (laughs) now you know uh, the the problem i'm having and this is really an issue that we're going to have to deal with because okay so when i talk to you i don't know this is jumping ahead a lot um when I talked to you last, we weren't sure about distribution. We're currently, I currently have a producer's rep at AFM, huh. and, uh, oh, okay. which is the American film market, which right. is basically the West Coast version of where, or not the West Coast, but it's where the United States takes its movies to sell to international right. Dist- right. distributors. We have a rep there now, um, and algorithm really doesn't fit in anywhere. So our expectancy of success there is low. Mm. But um, because of its uniqueness and because it ha- already has a worldwide audience, we're thinking about doing more creative distribution. So that's kind of like, that's breaking news right now. That's a conversation I had this morning with with one of the producers. That's awesome. The first breaking news we've ever had. We've never had, and it's going to come out tomorrow. So it's not really... (laughs) Yeah. But but if if somebody at at AFM and hears this and wants algorithm, we're there. We're there. Track us down. So tell, um, tell me though, like you already you said you had a worldwide audience. Explain that. So because one, that was yeah. that was interesting. Yeah one of, one of the things that that the reason that that algorithm is not admissible to the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences Awards called the Oscars uh, is because the Oscars say that the movie to be admissible has to premiere in Los Angeles and New York at a theater for customers and have. Uh, standard movie advertising. Okay, brace yeah. for that. Because okay. what that means is that you have to rent a theater, which costs no less than $3,000 a week, if you can find right. it that cheap. Right. And then you have to do at least $30,000 worth of advertising in those cities huh. to, to even be admissible. I mean, that's like part of the contract. Yeah, you cannot you cannot huh. submit to the Academy Awards unless you premiered in both of those cities and paid the advertising fee. Huh. Okay. So good to know. Good I to guess. know. That's good to know. <laughs> so um, aside from all of the the internal machinations that is the the Oscar uh, campaign that the filmmakers have to do, yeah, which is in the multiple millions. Um, but right, right, right. so so the so SAG recognized that there are a lot of filmmakers out there like us who want to make movies, um, but and want to get access to quality talent. Some of whom are SAG actors, some of whom aren't. But they wanted their SAG actors to be working, and uh, so they created uh, brilliantly created what's called the New Media Agreement, 
And what the new media agreement does is it basically eliminates all of the really nasty clauses in SAG and allows actors to work on projects that have no budget. And we didn't have really a budget to do this. We, we did it on sweat equity. We did it on, based on the profit share agreement. And, um, right. So you mean the people working on your movie didn't make, didn't get paid as on the days for the days that they were working, they basically have a portion of like, like slight, like ownership. Not, not, not ownership. Uh, there's a very clear distinction. Okay. Um, what they would be considered is is uh, silent partners. Silent partners. Okay. Yeah. Uh, on a very like, if you really want to nail down the law, and my lawyer does with me, so she makes this all very clear to me. <laughs> um, uh, so, so the the new media agreement stipulates that the movie has to premiere online. Right. Okay. Um, and I said to them, I was like, yeah, we're going to put it up on YouTube. And I don't think they care whether it's YouTube or Vimeo. It just needs to premiere online because that's the function right. okay. of the new media agreement. It's the idea is to facilitate new media projects and new media is the web. Um, so that's what we made it under. And so uh, what a lot of independent filmmakers do is they'll, they'll facilitate the, the production on the new media agreement. And then when their movie sells to an international distributor – they will renegotiate that contract to the low or ultra low budget, depending on what the movie sells for. Um, and then sell the movie because it no longer requires that internet premiere. Hmm. Okay. We decided like, this is a hacker movie. Why not just premiere it the way the SAG media contracts suggests and fulfill the agreement the way we said we would. Uh, so for 24 hours on July 14th, which is Bastille day in France, um, the day the people rose up and killed all the bad rich people. <laughs> did you do that on purpose or did yeah. you just, okay, no, it was, okay. it was very deliberate. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what was deliberate also, but probably a stupid idea was that I also did it on Paris time just to make the metaphor abundantly clear. And that led to more confusion than was worth. Um, I'm far away. <laughs> well, if you look at the website, you'll see like the times of things that premiere and sometimes it's Florida and sometimes it's Los Angeles and sometimes it's London so why not and sometimes make it more it's confusing, Paris. Right? So like that's where you go to know the schedule. <laughs> okay. Like 9 PM Paris. Um, you're so, you're so, that's, that's awesome. okay. That's awesome though. I mean, so it's, you, oh, it's, cool. it's complex to the point of confusion and it did, it did damage. I wouldn't do it that way again. I would just do everything <laughs> it, LA time it did and damage. anybody in Paris can be bitter. Uh, although I love Paris, a beautiful city. Yeah. Um, so, so we released it for 24 hours on July 14th. And uh, in that 24 hours, some very interesting things happened. Um, a part of my research for, uh, there's a lot of Easter eggs in Algorithm. And one of them is, uh, Will, the main character, is searching through some files that he downloaded. Uh, and the list of the files on his screen are the actual uh, names of the top secret NSA programs. Okay. Uh, that the NSA is currently using to spy on everybody. But yeah. I just so, wanted to ask real quick: the background in on your website, it almost looks like fingerprint done Matrix style. Is okay, there anything that is, to that? That is very stylized. I don't know what that is. Uh, I I, <laughs> I don't know what it I, is. But... I recognize one of the things I think is is critical as a writer, director, producer, everything guy uh, is in recognizing what I'm good at, and equally as important, what I'm not good at. Uh, and bringing people in who are good at what I'm not good at. Right. Yeah, and that's what we've been talking about for the you know for the last little bit is how you saw uh, genius in other people like your DP and the guy that mm -hmm. did your, your music, and you're like, I can't do it as I can't well do as what you do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so you got them to do your movie regardless of what people think of the movie or how if it wins an Oscar or whatever it. It's just that you were able to um, kind of delegate. It, I mean, I think it's real important. We haven't really talked about this on the show, I don't think, to, to um, be critical of yourself or kind of like use brutal truth and be really honest and recognize your flaws and your faults. What are you great at? What are you not so great at? And you did that what sounds like in a relatively quick way, and you were able to find people that were... Um, could do it the way um, you envisioned, knowing that you couldn't do it. Um, well, the wild well. thing about the script and the project, Brad, is that um, 
is when people decided to work on it, they recognized that it was something better than they usually get. Uh, and they worked a lot harder than they do on most things. And they pulled in favors with people that they were waiting for their big chance to, to do. And they all did it, including me. Like I owe everybody on the cast and crew huge favors. If they ask me to do something, I'm like, yes, yes gladly. You, you have, you, you, and you have to, you're, ob- you're obliged yeah. Uh, it's it's not even obligation. I want to help them because yeah, yeah. they did me such a huge favor. Like they they launched my career uh, in a very meaningful way, um, and and it's a debt that it, as much as I owe Earl for that liberating blog post, uh, I owe Satsuki and the uh, Madaresis and and everybody involved. Um, so so I I, I uh, they 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 just they they really brought it because they believed in it, but. But it is, it is like if, if you're not good at writing, you can spend the 12 years that I did to get good at it, or you can find someone who already has spent the 12 years like Earl or Matt and who are writing scripts and get their scripts because there are people out there who are good and whose work is just languishing in anonymity and are looking for, for people to make their stuff. Or if you're not a good director, find someone who is. There are lots of USC film graduates or whatever directors who are just waiting to, for the chance. Yeah, I think in order to evolve as a filmmaker, you've got to learn, okay, I don't need to control everything. Let me concentrate on what I'm great at and hire, you know, hire other people to do what I'm not so great at and let them do it. Great. That's, that's it. Exa- even, even this podcast is a perfect example. You guys do podcasts better than I do. <laughs> yes. And, and so, uh, I so let Mike do all the work. I'd with like me on algorithm right now. <laughs> I'd like to see evidence of that. <laughs> I just show uh, up, Mike. That's, does it all. that's evidence that's going to remain in my closet <laughs> again until the Garage Band days. So, uh, on the day of the release, I contacted Steve Gibson. I contacted uh, one of the the women from Hack Five, a woman named Shannon Morris, who is unbelievably brilliant at what she does, uh, and a friend of the one of the uh, the production manager. And um, I contacted. Uh, John Young at Cryptome, and I said, "Our movie's live for 24 hours. Let 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 your audience know." Uh, and they 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 put it out uh, and and broadcast it. And and something really extraordinary that we didn't expect to happen happened. We, uh, we expected to get like maybe maybe 1,500 or a thousand views. Right. Um, and you mean you put it out for people just they could just see it for free? Yeah, for that for 24 free. hours. Okay, for 24 hours. Uh, it was on our site. Uh, but you could watch it for free on an embed. Uh, and what happened was extraordinary. Uh, in that 24 hours, uh, a very famous hacker named uh, John Draper, known as Captain Crunch, uh, found it and said he loved it and contacted me on t- on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. He's so famous. He's like old school back before when computers were being made. Uh, yeah, hackers do not get any more famous than John Draper, except the next guy, Steve Wozniak, who is the co-founder of Apple, right. publicly said that he loved the movie. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and then uh, uh, another e- almost as famous, probably more famous to the current generation, a guy named Kevin Mitnick. Oh, uh, yeah. If you listen to the uh, This Week in Tech podcast, you'll know who Kevin Mitnick is. Cause they, you'll know who all these guys are. Yeah. They're, they're legends. They're on the shows. Yeah. And justifiably, they know they have forgotten more about hacking than I will ever know. Right, and they don't forget anything. So, <laughs> so they what did they do? They um, they, they did, all just promoted it to their people, huh. including Cryptome. Right. Uh, and and so uh, you put it online, uh, and, and then it got mentioned on one of the the major blogs, and the name of which blog escapes me right now. I'm sorry for whichever it, one it is. I, they don't it, really it's need not my security publicity. now. Pardon. I thought you said something about the guy on security now. No, no, like a major news site, like oh, okay. like Gizmodo level, Reddit Gizmodo. or something oh, okay. like that. Okay. It wasn't Reddit, no. Okay. Uh, although we did get on, um, what's it called? Y Combinator. Huh. Wow. Uh, J- all yeah. in all in the one twenty four hour period. All in the twenty four hour period. Huh. So our site uh, in that twenty four hours, uh, our 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 video got viewed seventeen thousand times. Jeez. Uh, the main and that's from that, across the world, right? Yeah, the main <clears throat> the main uh, website that that the major news article linked to was a pirated version on Vimeo that wasn't us, uh, oh. because by that time that the woman wrote the article, our site had our our video was done. The twenty four hour period was done, 
So she linked to the pirated video. I contacted her. She was awesome. I said, this is pirated. Could you not link to it? And she took it down, which Could I appreciate. You, this is pirated. Uh, Could you not link to the pirated version of my movie, yeah, please? Yeah. yeah. And she yeah. was cool about it. She's okay. like, sorry about that. That My mistake. And she fixed it. Like, it, it, she was awesome. Right. But for that time. So at this point, I kind of lose track of the, of the views of, of exactly how many times it was viewed. But people, after watching the movie... Uh, came to the site, and that week, uh, our website got 230,000 views Jeez. from every single country on the planet, except so, for four in Africa, where I'm pretty sure the internet doesn't exist. Four, four views in Africa. No, four no, countries no, 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 in no, Africa countries. didn't view it. But we got views in, in Syria, in India, in China, in North Korea, Jeez. in Pakistan, in Lebanon, in Sudan. So, did, it, well, I just so, wanted to say, uh, didn't hackers... Um, like put it, uh, what do you call it when you? It's all, it's all on it's all on the torrent sites. The too. torrent sites. There you go. You knew yeah. where I was going. It's on Pirate Bay. Like you Google. <laughs> Don't say that. Edit it movie, out. <laughs> Don't pirate up. the movie. <laughs> so, but so uh, just so I'm clear, in the in that one twenty four hours, the buzz got hit out. The buzz got out. The word got out. Everybody loved it. And then your movie was hacked off of your site or did that take place it took place in the first yeah. probably 10 minutes <laughs> yes holy shit dude that's yeah, incredible it was how gone. fast that the moment happened. the moment we released it it was gone huh were they sitting around cuz they were hackers <laughs> were they were they just sitting around waiting for it or like how did it get out that fast uh even some of the journalists that i mentioned earlier uh-huh. The moment that they they didn't view it off of my site, they just slurped it and 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 burnt it to disc and watched it at home. Yeah, Jeez. you you should have changed That's your insane. logo to hackthismovie dot com. Hackthismovie dot com. <laughs> Jeez. So so the reason that the soundtrack is as low as it is 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 kind of an answer to that problem, which is the the industry is changing completely. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a guy named uh, Tim, and I don't remember his last name, but he's the he's the guy who does. Uh, He's the CEO and founder of a really great theater chain in the U.S. called the Alamo Draft House. Uh, and he said, and he's like cutting edge. He's as cutting edge as it gets. And he said that uh, if anybody tells you they know what the film landscape looks like, is going to look like in five years, they're lying. In wrapping up, what is happening now? Like, what's what you you said you you're looking you're looking at distribution. Yeah, choices, right now, kind of, or? kind of, we're we're trying to figure out the landscape to predict maybe yeah. not the next year, but the next month, what's going to happen, and and where and how do we distribute it? Um, one of the things that's that's really begun to to be interesting is that some some people that are in the hacking community uh, around the world have begun contacting me and saying, "How can I view this? What can what can we do?" Uh, and 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 the goal is to appease the pirates in a way that is financially sustainable right um there's there's kind of two ethoses that are in conflict with with algorithm one is that we crowdfunded the movie and technically made it for uh seventy eight hundred dollars huh that's that's incredible which is insane yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. nobody got paid yeah Uh, especially not me Um, especially not me (laughs) yeah yeah i know the feeling but everybody nobody got paid uh we covered people's living expenses if they absolutely could not afford to do it but otherwise, yeah. Ex- uh, actually, the makeup people got paid. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they have kit fees. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, they they have non replaceable things that are just anyway. Um, so there's the idea that we can that you can make a feature length movie for seventy eight hundred dollars. Then there's another subset of that, which is something that I'd like to address here, which is that the idea that that to continue to make movies as a career at that budget level. I think is is dangerous and inherently problematic because uh, it implies that the value of the movie is very low. Yeah, and that the value of your time is is zero. Right, that's yeah. exactly yeah. it. So, yeah. so as a fun experiment, I I did a budget of what algorithm would have cost had people got paid, uh, and it was seven hundred thousand dollars. Yep. Also, so it's like a thousand time, a thousand percent. Uh, and that is that is absolute minimum guild wages. Yeah, that's Jeez. not paying people what industry people get paid. That's like barely being able to pay rent in Los Angeles. Jeez, that's insane. I mean, it's not insane because I know, I know, but it's it's insane. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out 
what we can do with algorithm in a way that appeases the pirates and gives them what they want, which is uh, one of the pirates contacted me on Twitter, and I'm going to find his list for you because I think it's important about what he said. Like, this is, this is the guy who's basically in charge of the pirate community in Spain. So it's an actual political party, and he's a major player in it. Huh. And this guy has begun corresponding with me. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he said, you, have, you checked, quick, have you checked all of your connections to make sure you, you definitely secure? Uh, you know what? That, that's futile. <laughs> Utterly futile. I want to uh, mention real quick, though, at the end of your movie when they did the Q&A, I, I found it interesting how <laughs> you kind of wrapped up the Q&A by talking about how paranoid you became after researching this movie and making the movie yeah. and you had like some tips like with email and stuff and you're like don't do this and don't do that and then you know, stuff that people are doing all the time you're like I don't do this anymore and, you're, and then so you left everybody paranoid everybody looking over their like, shoulders yeah should I stop you know there's, opening there's, email <laughs> there's, there's, there's something that my tactical advisor said to me uh, he said that there's two kinds of hacking uh, there's there's attacks of opportunity and there's targeted attacks. Uh, and if somebody targets you and they're a competent hacker, there's nothing you can do. Right. Just resign yourself. Uh, they will find a way in. There's a 15 year old kid in Long Beach who broke into the CIA. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's how possible it is. Um, granted, he's one of the better hackers, but it's not hard. I mean, I watched the. A documentary on PBS, and I was like, "Whoa! It's so that's how they do it. They just make a phone call, and then they can hack all your stuff." <laughs> I was one of the places algorithm screened was a uh, festival the the Hacker Magazine twenty six hundred puts on, uh, and it's called Hope, and it happened to be Hope Ten, which they did as Hope X. It was in New York, uh, and what they did at this conference, they were teaching social engineering, which is what you just described. It's mm -hmm. a form of hacking where you manipulate people to get them to give information to you that they're not supposed to right. do through various techniques. What these guys did is they called the army base that's right next to the, the headquarters of the NSA and got the, I think the guy was a, a captain. He got the captain who answered the phone to give them the phone number to the NSA, which is top secret. And they did this in front of an audience, and it was videotaped and streamed. That's awesome. Oh, like, my God. Like, it's that. So they don't have to do that, uh, and it's a bad idea for anyone to try and do that because the risk to reward is so extreme. Uh -huh. um, the people who actually get caught doing that go to jail for a long, long time. Yeah. Except like, this guy who bad did it jail. In front of, except this guy who did it in front of an audience. Yeah. Well... <laughs> He was they, yeah. They 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 conceal they concealed the number that they gave for 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 because of exactly that. Right, right. Right. Wow. Like they beeped it out so the uh, I couldn't hear it, but that's like they do that stuff. Yes. So th that's a targeted attack and if somebody does that, they're gonna get your right. stuff. So that's number 1. You said there are two types. Targeted yeah. attacks. The second is one. the second is attacks of opportunity, which is basically there are robots <laughs> online, only they're called bots. And it's bots. basically See, and that's, it's, bots. Yes. that's what it was. Bots. That's bots. where robots came from. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's robots. essentially a computer that sits there, or a set of computers, a botnet, uh, that goes around and hits every single computer on the internet, looking for what are called zero days, which is our exploits that are known uh, and available to use now yeah, before they get fixed or before updated. they get patched. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So uh, some of those are exploits inherent in the software, but even then. Uh, one of the things that they do that's very common would be uh, there are just there are just some simple things that people can do to protect themselves against attacks of opportunity. Uh, one of the things that really blew my mind as just the height of human, I don't know if it's Depravity? ignorance or stupidity, but it's one of the two. <laughs> stupidity. Uh, people, when they get their new driver's license or credit card or ATM card, will photograph it. And then they'll post it on their social media account. Oh, yeah. Why and do they do that? And there's an entire Twitter account dedicated 
to showing those images that they find. I'm not even talking about people hacking your phone or your iPhoto account. These people will Facebook. voluntarily post images of their ATM card on their Twitter account. But Which, why? Why? Yeah, I, who knows? Okay, it, does anyone does anyone have any idea why it's important to it's anyone like say, else? Yeah. It's like saying, here's my social security number. And it's different. <laughs> like, if you're eating a cheeseburger, you're like, this cheeseburger is so effing good right now. I'm going to take a picture and make everybody feel bad. That makes sense to me. <laughs> but taking a picture of your ATM, your your debit card, and going, I got a debit card yeah. today. Look how fancy it is. Like, what? And then flip it over and take a picture of the security so number. The Just security give them everything. It even has one of those newfangled security numbers. <laughs> See? Yeah. So 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 that's something that people do. They choose uh, bad passwords that are easy to guess that include their name and or birth year. Oh, yeah. Uh, the information they, that you can easily get off of Facebook or whatever. Yeah. And that's their password. Sure. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. So so just not doing those basic kinds of things. Okay. Here's the thing though. Like like as I as I as I began to research all of this and I was I said this to the lead actor. He he really started to get freaked out. Chris Panzera <laughs> is 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 smart enough to get the character and smart enough to understand really the implications of what I the research I was showing him. He got freaked out. And I said and he said I'm starting to get freaked out. And I was like, "Chris, here's the thing. If they're coming after you, they're going to get you." Don't do stupid things uh, and just be okay with it, man. The world was like this yesterday and it's going to be like this tomorrow. Right. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you any more creepy stuff. Don't take pictures of your ATM. Don't share your password with anyone you don't trust implicitly. There you but go. other than that, it's like it's all there's, good. there's no such thing as a secure computer ever anywhere. Yeah, or in the a world. secure TV. I thought I, that's one of my favorite parts of the film. Was yeah. I was like, Thank "Oh, you. how cool is that? You can put like a Pringles can with you know some stuff on the outside of someone's house and hack their TV, and then a Pringles can." <laughs> yeah, yeah, my 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 technical advisor actually came up with that. It was a modification of something called a uh, Cantana, where the, exactly. the Pringles cans, the metal in the Pringles can, is used as a highly directional yes uh, antenna. That was really cool. Yeah. Antenna, but um, <clears throat> since I felt then, proud of myself. That, I saw that in the movie. I turned to Mike and I said, that, "That's an antenna that Pringles can. That's what they're going to use it yeah, for." Yeah, Brad would say that would actually work. <laughs> yes, thanks, Brad. <laughs> but then, but then the the Cantana, the the thing that we did with the Raspberry Pi and just dropping it off, that became a thing now. And I'm pretty sure I didn't create it. But uh, yeah. I thought everyone that was into hacking or new advanced users of computers knew about that. Uh, the Cantana thing was known, but not what we did with it. Oh, we, okay. It, what we, we didn't use it as a directional amplifier. Right. We're going to wrap up because we've been going <laughs> on for almost an hour and a half. Yeah. We got to but all the meaty good stuff, though. I will tell you this. You're way smarter than the rest of us. Your movie is really smart. Um, Thank you. It, I think it requires... I think it is going to require someone to have patience to sit almost through like a master class... In hacking, yeah, to enjoy the movie. But if they, if you can get, if you can get to that, um, and that's not a criticism. That's an actual like that's a that's a criticism of the audience that doesn't have the patience <laughs> to watch it. You know what I mean? Like Thank if you, you want, I mean, yes, this movie <laughs> in a way there's a lot of voiceover and it spells it out, but it doesn't spell it out in like a, a cheap, um, what's the word, expositional way. Like, like yeah. it's it's breaking it down to the point to where like you have to really think up to it still and can still grasp what's going on. I I totally enjoyed the mood that your mo- their movie, the look and feel and the sound and the performances set from beginning to end. And uh, I just, I mean, I enjoyed watching it. It looked great on the big screen. I don't know. I guess you've seen your movie on the big screen before. Uh, have I? <laughs> not not that not that big. Not that yes, big. Yes, yes, I did. Our we, our casting crew premiere was in L.A. and it was on a a big screen. It's it's fun, isn't it? It was fun. Uh, I I'm kind of indifferent I, because with seeing it that big, you see all the flaws even bigger, right? It isn't it isn't that. It's just like yeah. like for me to right now to me, uh, and this is going to be. I'm assuming that your audience is primarily filmmakers. Yes. So, uh, for me, when I see it on the big screen, I was like, well, there's $1,500 that I had to spend to make this happen. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so that's you, what it is to me. So, uh, it was free when I saw it at home. 
<laughs> do you um free to the hackers when they do you have are you but just, i love it when people see it and 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 love the movie that that means a lot when i when it, when my artistic stuff and the and the work that we've worked so hard to do when people like it and they share it uh that's that's what means and and especially when they pay for it because that means that they're enabling me to continue to make art which is what i love yes so are you working solely on getting this out now or do you have something else you're working on uh, so we're working on this, and I actually have an idea for the sequel to Algorithm. I'm, I'm kind of like Stephen King, not oh. in the quality of my writing or in the general feel of it, but in that I'm trying to create a single connected universe. Yes. Uh, and so I have an idea for the sequel of Algorithm that is not about computer hackers necessarily, but does segue some of the same characters into uh, the next story. Yeah. which is essentially that um, the world has an energy crisis that is imminent and uh, and they need very smart people to solve it. Speaking of that, just, I don't know, I, randomly, <laughs> have you seen the show Scorpion and what do you think about it? <laughs> uh, I don't have any cable. I, I watch only on Netflix or Blu-ray or, or in theaters. Yeah, unfortunately, one of the things I've realized, I'm sorry to ramble on, but uh, I, I, to say yes to filmmaking means to say no to everything else. Everything else, yep, yep. And, and to be good at it is to, is, to, is to, for me, is to focus on it exclusively. So I, I don't get to, to play video games. I don't get to uh, read as much books as I'd like to or travel <laughs> yeah. the world casually. So basically you're saying, no, Brad, I'm intellectually superior to you. <laughs> it and I do not to waste it's, my time with TV. Frivolous things. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean to come off as that. No, 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 no. We're, just, we're, we're picking on Brad. We're not picking on okay. you. <laughs> now, Brad's bu- brilliant. Whatever you're doing, man, keep doing it. Yay! But don't encourage One more him. Cartman impersonation. Honestly, yeah, please. Um, uh, you, uh, you're starting to piss me off, man. <laughs> Dude, that's perfect. I, I hate it. you guys. <laughs> so if, if people want to keep up with my stuff, go to thehackermovie.com and my various places that I'm on on social media are there. Yes. Um, that's the best way. Twitter is easily the, the place I'm most interactive on. It's my favorite place because the information is condensed. Uh, and then we can take the conversation into other venues should yeah. it require a larger space. But, so what is your Twitter handle? At Jay Schieffer. Working on rebranding it because no one can spell Schieffer. <laughs> well, how do we spell it then? Uh, S-C-H-I-E-F-E-R. I, I so it's J A Y or J oh the letter J J, J, J yeah. the letter J and then S H yeah we'll put a link in our show notes there we it, go. so awesome. people can do it and also like thehackermovie.com, dot com but there there's links to it from there yes. too as well yeah well man I can't I'm so glad we got a chance to meet and hang out and watch movies yeah and, you're awesome and, man. and uh, well thank hey, you. you know what yeah. I wanted to say I <laughs> was really I thought I thought Impasse was gorgeous man oh dude thank yeah. you. That first shot was killer. That first shot yeah. is the favorite, my favorite, most favorite thing I've ever made. I, from the beginning to end, man, it is just brutal. So props on you for for for, for yeah. speaking of holding shots, man. There's oh, there's yeah. nothing that goes oh. through the range of emotions yeah. like that one yeah. shot you did. It's yeah. uncomfortable. It ma- yeah. it kind of puts you in the emotion of the character yeah. because it you're so uncomfortably. Does. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it, uh, now you've now you've stricken my director's commentary. Oh, let's button. talk for another you ten my, minutes. You push the director's commentary <laughs> track. Um, I I actually just feel like uh, we had ten or eleven minutes to tell a story, and what would you know? What's the quickest way to to jump right into the emotions of the character? We had to. I felt like it was an emotional roller coaster that had to take place over you know ten or eleven minutes, and uh, you got to get in there quick. So. Honestly, I feel that one shot could be its own short story because the moment uh, I'm not—I don't want to <laughs> spoil it—but the no. moment the guy gets up is is and and has his line, I was like, "That's it." That's that summarizes brilliant. it, and yeah. her reaction was yeah. just—that's a story. Awesome. Well, thank you. We have we have mutual respect for each other. Yeah, yes. that's such a that's such a, such a satisfying <laughs> feeling. We we make it a point to only have people on our show that think we're geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're more fun to talk to. <laughs> no, but okay. So, if you want to reach us, we're at, we're on Twitter at Film Reverie, uh, R E V E R I E, 
And um, if you want to send us an email, it's filmreveriepodcast at gmail.com. If you want to do a voicemail, uh, call us at 321-804-3271. And please, if, you've, if you like our show, uh, go to iTunes and give us a five-star review, and it'll help our show pop up in their little, yeah. you know, uh, where they ca- how they categorize what show shows up first. It's a bunch of nonsense, but we really appreciate it. And as Brad always says, if you're going to go to iTunes and review our show, give us a five-star review and not a one-star review. We greatly one appreciate it. One or the it. other, no in-between. <laughs> And so, Jonathan, it's awesome. I can't wait to see what you do next because uh, I imagine it's going to be beautiful and Thank smart you. and and smarter than me. <laughs> well, hopefully, it's approachable I, still. That's you. <laughs> I'm. I don't subscribe to that. I'm no. smarter than both of you. Put in the yeah. No, but I'm. I don't no. need to prove myself. <laughs> <laughs> the person who just said I'm smarter than both of you, but I don't need to prove myself. <laughs> See, you got it. He's Jonathan sitting there going, I think they're wrong. I'm smarter than both of them put together. <laughs> he just did a bunch of research and listened to podcasts <laughs> and talked people into doing stuff he wanted to do. Awesome. It's nothing special, <clears throat> uh, right. except for the fact that I've never done that. Well, it's like you said in the beginning, man. Just get up and do it. <laughs> yes. Do it. <laughs> Just real quick. I was supposed to, this week, finish, you know, at least start writing yeah. my short film, even though we've outlined it. Yeah. <laughs> Give yourself a deadline. That helped me. I, I gave I gave him a deadline. I said, by today. Friday, I want to see your first draft. So we're talking about eight or nine pages, right? <laughs> I wrote nine pages last night in an hour and a half I know, while I, can I was write eating a day. salad at Chick-fil-A. I saw that, man. I almost retweeted because it was awesome. I was like, if you want to know how to write, you have to do this, say, deadline, and then reward on success. And your yes. reward was, I get to turn Twitter back on. <laughs> yep. My and reward was, was a man. bad back because my back hurt so much I couldn't yep. sit for more than an hour. So today I said, hey, Brad, did you... Uh, uh, do you have a first draft? You're supposed to have a first draft for me. And then I... Uh, uh, no, I, this, 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 Mike, yeah, I did this. Mike, what happened was <laughs> you know, my back, it was hurting a lot. And then when my back wasn't hurting, I was just, just sitting down and I was like, okay, we're going to write just now. And, but then I was like, you know, bored. And then there's a TV show on and I was more interested in that than my own script. And I was like, yeah, oh, script. Script. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm not making hey, a fan. The algorithm soundtrack is on my phone right now. I did I did it while we were talking. Oh, I want Brad, you gotta to, go to you yeah. gotta go to alg- no. hackermovie.com. Hack it, just copy it and I'll put it on my phone and- No, you go sweet. A sale. <laughs> <laughs> a sale. One sale. Go to, go to the hackermovie.com, download the score, put that in your ears. And turn the TV off, and, and you'll get more right. And think about though. all the mathematical computations that went into the deep pops. At some point, we're going to have to end the podcast. <laughs> he made him laugh. <laughs> beep boop, beep boop. <laughs> all right. So, anyway, um, that's it. Cut. We're done for the day. Film Reverie is a production of Broken Sunset Films, LLC. It was created and is produced under a Creative Commons license by Michael Beckemeyer and Bradley Kingston. Copyright Broken Sunset Films, LLC, 2014.